What's up, Periscope? Share, share if you don't mind. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be hot. Come on. It's the DJ. <laughs> hey. Hey, come on, you all. Come on through. about having this guest on the show today on I Am That Nation. You know, we said we're the ones, God, the Lord said in Matthew that he's looking for a group of people, that he will raise up a group of people that will turn this nation around. He said that will be obedient to the things he's called them to do. And guess what? Because you're here, you are one of the ones that's going to shake this nation. They're going to say, who is that? You said, I was born to turn the world upside down and to cause change in regions. So I want to say hello, 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 everybody. And welcome and welcome. I want to just, if you don't mind, can you guys please do me a favor on Facebook and Periscope. If you don't mind, can you share these? Uh, can you share and invite your followers? I feel that this is such an important subject that we as the body do not talk about. We talk about it, but we don't talk about it, if you know what I'm saying. So we we realize that the L, and I may say, look, nothing personal against anything. Y'all know I'm a comedian, but I may not say all the letters. I may say all the letters. So, but the LGP, L, that it's too many letters. The LGBTQ community that we tend to overlook them, and we always put them in a certain category. We put, we make their sins worse than our sins. You know what I'm saying? And you know, we just, we were just doing a series on God's plan, where God is not so much angry at the act of sin, but He's angry at the fact that we sin. So every sin has the same level of sin. So. I just want to get that clear and get that in your hearing. But here I got this wonderful, awesome, dyna dynamic man. But let me just retract. I was saying something. Listen, can y'all please do me a favor? Can y'all share this? Can you please um, have some watch parties regarding what we're doing today? And I know, you know, one thing um, the church always talks about evangelizing, evangelizing. We have to evangelize the thing the Lord is about, souls, souls, souls. And here's an opportunity to find out how can we minister to a community community that we literally just basically have turned our back on. And then when they come into the church, if they are very uh, masculine as a female or very effeminate as a male, we tend to shun them. Now, I don't, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm just saying because we do not know how to minister to these people, this group of people properly. 
Okay, so I've got the, my brother on here. I was introduced to him from another brother. He told me just watch him and watch him. And I have been feeling to be led to bring this uh, brother on. And his name is Louis J. And he's from Florida, y'all. Orlando, the home of Disney World. Well, it will cost you a life, a year's salary just to enjoy two days at Disney, at Disney World. <laughs> But um, this gentleman right here, he was in the Florida nightclub shooting. He was actually there on June 12, 2016. He's a PK kid. And I'm just, I don't want to tell too much of a story. I want him to tell his story. So if you all be so kind, let him tell your stories. We want you to ask questions. If you, if your children are in this, in, uh, in this type of situation, please ask him about it. He'll pray with you. Look, he's not untouchable. If you inbox him, and he, he will reply back to you. So we have some of his information. He's also going to give us information. So Brother Luis, what up, though? <laughs> What's up? We're finally getting to do this. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited to have you here. And I'm really looking forward to doing some things because I believe God in this season, he's doing something, Some we call it something what is, is different to, to some, but his has always been his plan. Yeah. And that finally lead us back on the road to what he's calling us to do. And so one of the things we can't holler salvation and forget about a group of people. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So, brother, I'm going to turn you loose. Go ahead. Oh, man. Well, it's an honor to be on here. And I uh, just want to say that not only is Orlando, Florida, a place where you go for Disney, but it's also a hub of revival that God is setting on fire. And I believe that in 2019 and the next years to come, God is just about to flood with his fire and his love. Um, so a quick little bit about me. I, I was born in Germany. My father was in the military um, and we were Catholic. We were, we were in the Catholic faith. And then um, there was a near death experience where it brought my, my father to questioning himself and questioning just everything and led him to uh, the Christian faith where uh, years later he became a pastor. So I was that little kid that run around and, and the other brothers and sisters used to snatch me up when I was being bad and I was like crazy PK. Um, but there was just something that was missing. Um, I was I was struggling with same-sex attractions from a very young age. Um, and I'm 35 now, but when I when I was growing up, it was not talked about in the church. It was very um, people were scared speechless to talk about it. Well, because a lot of people didn't know how to actually go about it. Um, you know, even uh, the society in the world weren't ready for it. You know, they rejected us a lot and and persecuted a lot of people. Um, so growing up, I finally came out to my mother and it actually uh, put my parents in a position where they felt as parents that how, how could, um, where did they go wrong? As pastors, how did they go wrong, you know? And then you have people from the church that were, um, asking them, okay, so you're running a church, you're a pastor. How can you lead us if you can't even lead your home? So there was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of rejection in the church where I was ministering to the young um, young kids at the time. And a lady came up to my mom and was like, we don't want him teaching our kids because you know wow. we he came out the closet and that we don't want these demons all over our kids. And I mean, I went running from the church, running from the church. Wow. And yeah, my mother was going through a lot. She cried a lot, a lot. So did my father and my, my family, you know? And uh, so what I did is I joined the army. I said, you know what? Let me join the army. And in my mind, because I didn't understand what I was going through and my confusion, um, I, I said, you know what? If I go to the army, maybe I'll be a man, you know? Maybe they'll get me right, like they say, you know? And, um, all these ignorant thinking, you know, that I had. Um, but in this... Um, I knew that deep inside there was something more inside of me. You know what I mean? Even though that there was this, there was confusion, and I was trying to find my identity and who I was. Um, there was always this thing inside of me that knew that there was more to life, that more to me than just what I was battling in my situation. Um, so as I go into the army, uh, here and there, I would end up at a church. You know, I would end up broken. I was always trying to do the 
um, relationships. I dated one of the biggest porn stars in America today. Um, we did it for three years, you know, and we try to do the whole picket fence. We try to do the whole, you know, American dream kind of thing. Uh, and it didn't work out no matter what we did. Wow. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> What did you just rewind? Pump them brakes. What did you just say? You were you were married to a porn, the, one of the biggest porn stars in the country. I wasn't married uh, because at the time it wasn't you know it wasn't okay. an option like it is today. But okay. uh, we dated for three years, so we might as well. You know what I mean? Like people yeah. in that world, you know that lifestyle. We we say we're married anyway, so okay. Um, we did everything you would do as as married folk, but we just didn't have the papers and stuff. But uh, um, which that you know I. It was crazy. Like I tried my best to make it work, show my parents that it can happen. But at the end of the day, I was sleeping in a California king size bed and we were just a million miles away. You know what I mean? And I, I tried my best to make it work, you know, bought the dog, did everything. And there was always that brokenness. There was always that, uh, I didn't have that peace, you know, at night. I just knew something was just wrong that, that no matter how much I painted it and make it look like it was real, it was always counterfeit. And then I was introduced into the drug life and then the club life. And uh, after we broke up, I became a big hoe. I was a male Jezebel. I was, <laughs> I was a male Mary Magdalene. I just did all the wrong things, you know, trying to self-medicate, trying to find myself, trying to, and I get it. It's not everybody's story, but it's mine. You know what I mean? And that's the thing that I've been through. Um, and in that, like I said, I would find myself in church, you know, and I would find myself trying to find God. But when I would get to church, the church would, uh, I would go in there and because they didn't understand, um, I would go into the church house and like a month later, they would say, oh, well, now you need to dress like this or now you need to talk like this. Oh, and by the way, you need to have a girlfriend because that's what salvation looks like, you know, and, and, and not the fruits of the spirit. So it was a whole bunch of rejection in the church uh, that I got. So that just caused me to run further away. And because of that, I believe that a lot of our, a lot of people that have, was raised in the church, a lot of people um, that knew the gospel uh, have a lot of church hurt, have a lot of pain because of rejection in the church. And that's where we're at today in society. But I believe that God is raising up people that are changing the game. And it's, the word is still the same, but he's equipping us. And um, long story short, I ended up at Pulse Nightclub. You know, I, I was in church for a whole year before that. And I was struggling and because I didn't reach out to my leadership. And I thought because if I reached out, they were going to, you know, uh, kick me out or reject me or, you know, uh, so, so in that fact, I don't really blame the church. I blame myself for not trying to get, you know, the right help. Uh, and because I wanted to battle it on my own and I thought that Luis could do it on his own and, oh, I got this, I'll just pray away and I'll just do this and I'll fast when none of that, you know, there was all, all it was was religion and legalism. There was no relationship, intimacy with the father. You know, there was not a lot of secret place. It was a lot of check the box, but it wasn't a lot of just, you know, uh, uh, just falling in love with Jesus and his word. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up at, I, I struggled and, and it got to the point where I saw some friends at the mall and they said, Hey, let's go to pulse. It was my birthday weekend. I was struggling. So I was like, you know what? Nobody's going to find out. Sonia, the whole world found out. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. Yes, I was just like, you know, I'm just going to go. I'm going to have a couple of drinks. I'll talk to some people and I'll just see what it's about because it's been a year. I've been, you know, going to church and it's, it's been a while, you know. And um, so I went and, you know, I almost lost my life. Thank God of his goodness and grace that I was able to make it out alive to tell the story. Um, God's gifted me with life. Um, and I'm very thankful and honored. And, and what's crazy is that even after that tragedy where I lost so many friends, where I was faced with the shooter in front of me and I should have been dead, everyone around my circle died. The people that I went out with, you know, they they died. You know, there was only a few of us that of my circle, um, well, not a few of us, there was a couple of us that, that made it out alive, you know, and that are now living and to tell the story. Um, but it was very, imagine trying to lose one friend, you know, and grieving that moment of one person. 
there was 49 of my friends. I didn't know them all, but I, you know, in the scene, it was so, it's so small in Orlando that everybody knows everybody. Um, it was, it's, it was sad. You know, I, I went in there, it was last call for alcohol. Um, you know, and let me actually go back because this is very important. Can I just stop you for a minute? Yeah. What, you have another device where you got the sound turned up. Let me see. Not the device you're on, but do you have another device that you got the sound turned up? No, just no, up. this is just it. Okay, so now tell us about what the Pulse Night, because a lot of people are not aware what the Pulse Night Club is. Okay, so... Uh, about two or three years ago, uh, there was a shooting in Orlando, Florida, where where a man uh, uh, a man went into a club and he shot forty nine. Well, he shot a whole bunch of people that were injured, but forty nine of them died. Um, it was one of the worst tragedies here in the U.S. that we have ever faced. It was a uh, it was a zall of hate. Um, and like I said, a lot of wonderful people, a lot of friends of mine um, that should be still alive today, you know, took their lives. Um, and I want to say to everyone that because Christ, you know, because I came to Christ, I'm able to forgive him and his wife for what they did. Because in order for me to be totally set free, I must forgive. Mm -hmm. uh, and he is now dead. He took his life. You know, he took his life that night. Um, and it affected everyone. It affected the whole nation. It affected the whole world. And in that, you know, uh, Christ was showing his love still, even though through that. Um, a couple months later, I found out that I was HIV positive, uh, not because of pulse or anything, but because I was a hoe, because I lived a promiscuous life. I just, I ran around with a lot of the wrong people, you know, and, and it was toxic for me. And uh, it finally caught up to me, you know, but God, Sonia, but God, yes. he still had a plan. Yes, come on, come on, come on. So let me so in that so you actually first thing i want to people want to know and asking so you you stop actually fornicating because that's what it is fornicating <laughs> you <laughs> stop fornicating <laughs> yeah, yeah. they get you know so good okay so in, in that process <clears throat> excuse me i've been i want to say this though it was, Go ahead. it was definitely a journey and if people are looking for a perfect person, they got to move to the next channel because that's definitely not me. I need a savior every day. You know, I guess they think that because I came out of homosexuality or I've chosen this life that I'm not prone to be tempted no more. And we're tempted every day. His mercy and his grace are new every day. It doesn't mean to stay in sin, but it's love to get out of sin, you know. And I don't wake up every day saying I'm not going to sin. I wake up because I know that he that I'm his, you know, um, and in that. In that, I can journey and I can walk. You know, a lot of people, like I said, they're, they're, they're expecting this perfect Christian. Oh, he's come out. Now he's got to be this way. And no, we all need a savior every day. So I just wanted to highlight that real quick. Because a lot of people. Ooh, you're right. <laughs> you're totally right. You know, I always talk about, <clears throat> the Bible talks about, you know, you know, sexual sin is the only sin that we do to our bodies, that we do to our bodies. Yeah. So, um, but also again, as I shared with you before, that what we, we tend to categorize sin, you know, mm -hmm. oh, murder is, is the top number one, then sexual sin, you know, perversion is the next one. So, but again, we know it's not the act of the sin that God doesn't like, it's sin itself. So whatever it is, it's still sin. But what yeah. I want to get back, just let's, just let's go back to your journey. So tell us about when, uh, when your parents, because we have some people on here that are going through these things with their children. Yeah. They're saved and they're trying to figure out where did I go wrong? Did I do something or A, B, C, or D? So can you just go back and tell us what happened when you, when your parents, as your parents being pastors, what kind of happened? So my parents for a long time have been praying into this, like a lot of people's parents probably have, you know, and I just want to let the parents know that they're definitely, they're not alone at all. There's a team of people that are going through the same thing that they are. Um, and my parents, um, when they found out when I was at Pulse, they immediately flew over here. One thing that impacted my heart is that my father went on national television and he asked for forgiveness from the body of Christ. He said, I almost lost my son because of religion and legalism, but I want to ask forgiveness to the LGBTQ, to everyone. 
because I almost lost my my son and he asked for my forgiveness. So that impacted me because we didn't have a relationship. It was very tough to have a father son relationship when he just found out that because my father was molested at a young age. So when I came out of the closet, it's not that I came out as that I was gay, it's that he was seen his son as the abuser also, you know what I mean? As in, oh, I was, yeah. So it was very hard to have a father-son connection. And, and even as a pastor, it was hard for his ministry. But one thing that I loved about it is that they knew how to love. They knew how to not compromise the word of God. And there's a way to do that. And I'm not talking about kicking people out. I'm not talking about not eating dinner with them because what uh, what a lot of people, what a lot of LGBT um uh, friends of mine do, and even myself, uh, we were rejected by the church and our parents. You know, uh, they just, they, they're they real quick to let your daughter into the house. Not saying this is what happened in my house, but they're real quick to let it happen. Bring a daughter in that is having sex outside of marriage than a man to bring in another gay man. You know what I mean? Or, you know, it's quick to understand that people are liars and that's okay. Or, or they don't give 10% tithe, but let someone with the homosexuality come in. And so it's a whole different ball games. But one thing that I loved is that they loved me to the end. One thing that provoked me to come back to Christ is their love for Jesus that was inside of them. That's what provoked me. You know, a lot of us, we pray into, oh, please pray for my child. They're in this, they're doing that. They're in the gay community and I just don't know how to reach them. And I, 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 tell, them, I, I tell people that, how about we ask Christ to change our lives, to change our hearts? You know, we're so focused on spending our energy and change them, change them. Well, why don't we ask the Father to change our heart so that whenever they're around, they see Jesus inside of us. Instead of bringing them back to me, they're bringing them back to Jesus, which changes everything. Wow. Wow. So, again, I just wanted to introduce you to this awesome gentleman. His name is Luis. I love to say it like that, Luis. <laughs> So Luis, he says Luis J. He's from Orlando, Florida. He is a he's a PK kid. He was part of he was in, uh, when they had the Florida nightclub shooting in Orlando. I think it was in 2016, correct? Yes. Yeah. And uh, also, he he was a homosexual man. And he's not telling you he's not struggling. He's not telling you that he's not dealing with it. But what he what he is saying is that the love of Christ helped him move from one um, from that to uh, being healed and delivered. And he's and the one thing I love what he said. And as the body, we tend to we say we love, but love is an action thing or a shown thing. We can say it. But it doesn't mean it's just bacon and sometimes empty words. Action is shown by the love we have for one another. I think that's I think that's scripture. I think that's Bible, right? So, um, and so I have some people saying, asking. I can see some comments. It's kind of hard to read and and listen to you. So you went to the nightclub and you said from that point it kind of clicked or something or what happened? What made you say I'm done? What made you say what you, you know, well, your after the nightclub, I was actually really, really broken. Um, I, what I, what happened to me that night and afterwards was unexpected. And uh, I, there was a lot of people that came up and they were praying for me. Um, there was a lot of the church that went out to uh, pray for people that um, were uh, hurting and broken instead of judging. You know, there was a lot of good people. But then I got a lot of people from church and the enemy used that to get me angry, to get me uh, confused because they were they were uh, texting me and they were telling me, oh, but what were you doing there? That's judgment from God. Like that's what they get. And, and God finally came down and I was just like, what? And it caused me to, what was causing me to get closer to God because of that, the enemy used it to confuse me, to get me more angry to where I cried. And I was like, the time I need you the most, you know, and, and perfect love cast out fear. And I believe that they're, they were operating in fear, but at the same time, and I forgive them and I love them. And a lot of them have come up to me and we've, we've, we've talked, we've chat. Um, but that caused me to get a little further. It was when I got the report that I was HIV positive where I broke down. 
You know, I started mm -hmm. self-medicating on alcohol to dr drink away my, to think about what was going on in my life. I just couldn't believe it was me. You know what I mean? Even though I was being a hoe and going around and having sex all, with all kinds of people, I would, for some reason, we just feel like we're just, you know, oh, I'm a pastor's kid. I'm not going to get that kind of stuff, you know? And, and I got it, you know? And thank God that I'm undetectable now. Um, you know, and, and if I decide to have children one day, I don't have, you know, but at the same time, I also believe that God's going to give me the, the, the negative and the positive paper of me, you know, showing the world that my God can, you know, and that he will heal me. And I believe that. And I received that. But, um, in that, I just want to let people know that, you know, don't give up on your children. You know, parents, don't give up on your children. Show them that love, you know, and and, and love the fruits of the spirit that we see in, in Corinthians. It's not just, you know, praying them and beating them down with a Bible and scriptures. It's actually loving them when they need you the most, you know. Um, they're going through a lot. They're trying to find their identity. Am I, am I straight? Am I gay? What's going on? There's so much going on in their life right now that I believe that the parents, that's when they need to be more focused on their children and loving them, you know? Of course, being a walking Bible, you know what I mean? Sometimes a hug and a smile and an I love you does so much impact on their lives than judging them. Okay. So let me, so you, I love what you just said. You talked about parents, parents who are struggling with this issue with their children, um, either by or some children who they call, they have um, gender reassignment. I don't know what you call transgender. Yeah. Um, and even what they're doing in school, what are you, what is your thoughts about um, they, uh, they having just to put what they're saying, drag queens coming in and teaching children, reading them, um, uh, what children's stories? What, what are you in schools? What do you think about that? I'm gonna give my 100 opinion. I think that the body of Christ needs to stop worrying about the situation and start start getting together, going up to these schools and starting to do the same thing they can. If wow. they're they're not scared, they're not scared, and they're doing it. And hey, if they're doing it, they're doing it. But why don't we get prayer back into the schools? Why don't we go to our student teacher conferences? Why don't we start getting into the government system? One thing that I noticed when I went up to, uh, to the gut, to the, to Sacramento to go fight AB 2943 is that majority of the people there were non-believers, were people from the LGBTQ. So they, they, they've got it. They know it, you know, and I'm not blaming them for it. The church has been silent and have been so scared, speechless that, you know, we have that this is what happens, you know, and so we can't get mad. We could only love. What if there was people that got up and said, you know what, while they're reading, I'm going to go. I'm also come in there and read Bible stories and I'm going to also go in there and start a Christian club. I'm also do this so that that person reading that book can see the love of Jesus inside of me. See, love does a whole bunch of things. Love. One thing is not is hate. That, that's hot right there. You you said you said something right there. I love what you said. Instead of um, complaining about it and sharing it and talking about it, go in there and take some action. So you go in there and say, hey, if they can come in and read story time, I can read some of my stories. And then right. one thing, um, you, so you also said that a lot of parents don't attend these student, uh, what they teach parent, uh, my children are grown, parent-teacher conferences, right? Yeah. So, um, and so you can make the change. That's right. You know, some of these actions that we see if we just step up as believers, right? That's right. That's right. We're the city, we're the city on a hill. We're that light of the world. We're that salt. And how will they know if you don't love them? How will they know Jesus if you're stuck in the four walls of your church? And I'm not saying anything about the church because I love my church and I'm under the church. You know, I just want to clear that up, you know. But we so stuck in our houses and so stuck in the Bible culture life that we don't get out and make a stand or you know, win people to Jesus, 
You know what I mean? God, you know, Jesus left us with a command. He said to go and make disciples. See, Christians go to heaven, like my pastor says, but disciples take them with them. If we can go into the school system and start being disciples and loving instead of just like, oh my God, what are they doing? Look at what they're doing. Let's share this on our Facebook and, and let's comment. Why don't we start taking action and start loving and, and getting back into that? You know, I, I really feel strong about that. And one thing my the ministry that the Lord has given us is that fearless identity is going into the school systems this year wow okay so let me let me um let me ask you this um hold on i'm trying to start a watch party i don't know what i'm doing but i'm trying to start one so let me one thing so let me ask you this if uh, if someone comes into the body of christ an lgbtq person comes in and they have not been you know or their outward appearance is fully manifest you know they may be um, you know, I'm yeah. trying to be very sensitive on how I use words and uh, they come in and how are we to minister to them? What would you say? Would you, you know, sometimes we, what we tend to do, we tend to change the way we minister and say certain, you know, whatever the words we may choose in a judgmental form, how would you minister to someone like that? Well, one thing that, um, one thing that I can say is that it, it is a sensitive subject. You know, it's a lot of churches do not understand it yet. Um, and that's why we're just praying to go up into these churches and build communities where people, it's a safe place, you know, non-judgment zone where people can come in and learn the scriptures and learn who they are in Jesus, you know, uh, learn their identity, learn how to be a son, learn how to be a daughter in Christ. You know, we're so quick to uh, uh, change them that we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to do the change. Uh, okay. And and to, to minister to someone like that, you definitely need to, you know, for pastors need to equip the body, equip uh, a ministry team um, uh, to kind of show people identity. And this is not only just for LGBT identity, but this is also for everything else. You know, they have it for everything. You get pornography, you name it. If they can have an LGBT, former LGBT, someone that, you know, wants to learn the word of God and find their identity, um, I think that that would help out the body of Christ a lot. Okay. So let me ask you, do you, you go around, do you go around the country and minister or help leaders understand this community and how to minister to them? Because one thing I've always found in the body of Christ that, that I believe in, in they, and I'm not, believe me, I'm not an expert. I'm not pretending to be this great person, but however, I, I find that they don't really know how to really deal with they, if they come in the church because some of them limit because you know again as I shared with you earlier my cousin he he was homosexual and he that that was my best friend and but it didn't stop me from loving him it didn't stop me and I may not agree with his lifestyle but I did not stop loving him we still hung out we still did all the things that best friends did yeah. but uh, but he had some friends I just wanted to punch in the face. <laughs> hey, that's in and out the church. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, and so, how would you if if you get those people there? Most of the time, and that's just anybody. As you just say, are they going to come in angry? So, what if you cut, got somebody to come in? Is very defensive, but is seeking some help and find you know seeking the Lord. How do you handle that? You know, because I'm sure we all slip up. Because I know when I was trying not to have sex, uh, I slipped up. Yay. And um, so, how, you know, yay. So how do we handle that? How do you, how would you, you know, would you, if someone, if you were a pastor of a church and someone came in with that type of attitude or hardcore, whatever the case may be, how would you deal with that? Um, well, like I said earlier, these uh, these communities really do need to exist. Um, I believe that uh, you take it uh, like I tell a lot of people, there's no really big magic pill. Just like a prostitute would come in defensive and wanted to show out just like a liar, a stealer. You know what I mean? Like we, we treat people in sin with love no matter what. Um, now, when it comes to LGBT, like I said, it'd be great to have a community already equipped you know, uh, teach the community, teach the body of Christ. Hey, what do we do if a couple that are married come into our church and they have a kid? 
you know? So wow. we, want to, we want to be sensitive to that, to where that kid might be dra dramatized by the things that we teach in our classes. Never compromise the word of God, but there is a way how to show perfect love. There is a way how to show the love of Christ without that beating down judgment, you know? And, and I feel that that goes on everything. Like I said, you know, on every type of sin with someone trying to come in, um, we have to learn that if a transgender comes into the church, you know, how are we going to treat this? You know, well, we got to teach the body not to just get all crazy and start staring like they've never seen this kind of thing before, you know, and, and treat them with love. Hey, do you, what's your name? Would you like to, would you like to go out, you know, afterwards, after church, let's get some coffee. Let's be intentional about our relationships. We're not going to win through judging and all that. We're going to win through relationships. Relationships. Jesus did that. Jesus made relationships with people through relationships is what we have with Jesus. It's a relationship. It's a lovesick relationship. So that's how we should be with others, especially for people that come out of, uh, remember the church is a hospital. Where else are they going to go? People are like, oh, I don't want them to come into the church. Where are they going to go? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. they got to come to the church. It's a hospital, you know, and you're not at the hospital dictating when I get healed or when I don't. It happens through good sound doctrine. You know, it happens through a body of Christ that loves through the process, but we can never put a time on, oh, you got a fever, you got to get done and ready about next week, you should be done and out about this hospital. You know, no, we, we, we get them ready. We, we, you know, we put an IV on their arm, you know, we give them the right medication and, and we love them through it, you know, and if they leave, they leave. If they come back, we, you know, that's what we're here for. That's hot, right? I love that. Where you say it's not a time. So you don't say, oh, it's two days. You should be healed. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that. So let me, can you, so um, again, so we talked about a parent who, who just found out that their children are are considering themselves gay. We talked about you being a PK kid and your parents finding out you were gay. And what had happened, what had happened was, no, what happened with, you know, your dad being abused yeah. and, and, you know, he felt as though kind of it was his fault. And so, and, and that's a good point. We never thought about that. I know I love casting out devils. I, I do. And uh, I, I tell you, I love it. And so a lot of times when we minister to people, especially in those time, whether it be male or female, we find that a lot of times it's the parents that have either been raped or abused themselves. And so we have to go back in generations to pull that thing out of their lives so it won't affect them in their future. So we talked about that, and I love what you talked about, Pulse, how Pulse nightclub, um, uh, how uh, it kind of it kind of started you on a path of really saying this thing is real. And then when you said what really shook you the most is when you found out that you were HIV, right? Yes. And now you are not. You said you can't. What did you say about the HIV that they can't find it or you are? Yeah, so, so now it's undetectable. So basically it's uh, I'm on medication where it kind of puts it in a jail cell and it can't pass over. So if one day I do decide to have children or a wife, it won't pass through. OK, that's awesome. So what do you think about? Um, so I was just thinking about all this stuff we hearing about what's going on in Hollywood. We got our Kelly tripping. We got Kevin Spacey, the wise man, you know. And so um, a lot of these things, how would you minister? Because I, what I've seen in Hollywood, and trust me, I'm not an insider there. I just have inside the dreams what the Lord shows me. And it's a lot of that that's going on. So do you think, because I find that a lot of these young cats, me, I'm not oh, hold on, dreams. hold on, something happened. Hold on, hold on. And it's a lot of that that's going on. So oh, hold on. I, find that I don't know why it, um, it started running his mouth. I wasn't even trying to click on that. But anyway, <laughs> um, so what I wanted to say was, do you do you, and um because I find that a lot of these cats like the beavers and we had um a lot of these young young guys that came in were really they were good guys when they came in and then what happened, somebody touched them. 
and they can't talk about because I've dreamed about them. I've seen it. And so we find that even in the church, there are people that touch our young girls and our young boys. So um, how, what would you say if a leader, because I find that leaders really don't say much about it. They kind of just sweep it under the rug. What do you think? Did I really put it in the way? I told you I'm not a reporter, so investigator. No, that was good. That was good. Um, you know how do we how how would you address that in the body of Christ? You um, know, I like you know I definitely think that it would be addressed the same way that every other sin would be addressed. You know what I mean? Um, I think that we need to come to a safe place where we can talk about it. You know. We're quick to tell people not to do it because they'll go to hell or not to do it because they're out of covenant, but they don't walk people through that journey and they scare them speechless to where they don't want to identify or talk about it, that they run to these communities outside of the church. Wow. Yeah. All right. So listen, so I think I've asked all the questions I can ask. So you do go around the country. Someone invites you in. Do you do seminars? Do you do do you, you have speaking engagements? Do you go around just talking about that and explaining? And we know, again, the number one key to anything is love. Love covers a multitude of sins. It says, you know, you can kick bricks, jump off of windows, hold up big signs, but if you don't have love, it means nothing. So in, in that essence, I know that that's one of the keys that we surely, is that's spoon from our mouth again, but we don't often represent that. So when you go, you know, I wanted to just get people out here to get to see you and know you and say that, hey, yes, I do, I do seminars, I do come and speak, I do come and speak to the youth, as far as we know, there's a lot of DL people. We know that in Atlanta, you know, there's um, um, Atlanta is uh, has the number one in um, HIV for black women out there because there are a lot of DL men that are not afraid to, they won't, they don't believe that they're gay, but they are sleeping with men and then going home to their wives or their girlfriends. So we have so much out here. We really need to talk about this instead of sweeping it under the rug and ignoring it or criticizing it or literally rejecting it. So what I love, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is just get us out here to look, this is nothing to be afraid of. This sin is no different than the sin of drinking, the sin of addiction, being a thief, being a murderer, it's still sin and there's still yet we can still love them. You know what I mean? Because we tend again to choose who we love and who we forgive. So can you just um, again put your information out there so people can contact you and then before you get through the can you just pray for the parents who are dealing with their children like that then pray for the body to learn you know for wisdom on how to minister to these people because they're coming. Yeah. Yeah, it, there's there's definitely a revival. There's a flood um, through my Facebook, which is uh, Luis J four zero seven. Yeah, that's just the easiest way I can put it. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, it's Luis J four zero seven. And um, I we do our ministry fearless identity um, with another post survivor, Angel Cologne. We've partnered up together and we travel the nations. Uh, we travel all over actually just equipping the body of Christ on how to walk in perfect love, um, which casts out fear. Um, we teach, uh, we teach, we we preach, we, we go out into the city, we do freedom marches where uh, 12 individuals give their testimonies of how they came out of the closet again. And then they march around the city uh, we're going to every city, but we've uh, so far we've gone to LA, Washington, and in November we have Orlando, Florida, um, where we're just telling our stories. That's all we're doing. We're sharing our stories. We're sharing Jesus uh, because none of this would have been possible. We've tried it on our own strength, and the only one that's been able to do this is that lovesick relationship with Jesus. Wow. Um, and then we march around and we have a party afterwards. We got to hang out, you know, and, and the, the, the party is just bringing people to Jesus, people coming to Christ, you know, uh, people say they don't want to change, but people are changing. Like my inbox is flooded and, and how this ministry was birthed out real quick was that, uh, I was actually getting a lot of emails and messages from people in the church, pastors, 
leaders, evangelists saying, I've been struggling with for this for such a long time, but I don't have the community to talk to. I'm afraid that they might take my position. They might take my rank. I don't know how to bring this up because if I br one guy said that uh, he was a pastor, he brought it up to his church one time and they accused him of child abuse. They, have they accused him of all this stuff that he wow. never engaged in. So we've scared the body. We've scared people of staying quiet. So what happens is that it gets bottled up inside mentally you're going through it and it just causes chaos so that's what we've been doing we've been just uh traveling around um if you would like to book us for any events we would love to come out there for a couple days and put the body you know and we would love to uh, share jesus definitely with your city with your state um, and you can find me on the great world. You're breaking up. I don't know what's going on. Sound like you you mumble. It's, it just doesn't sound clear enough. You can find me at uh, Luis J. Okay. 407. Yep. So I, I someone asked a question. Said, "What is the line between acceptance and judgment? Even in relationship, people don't like being confronted with true soul. How do you say confrontation should be balanced to look like Christ?" Okay, well, one thing is that we're not Christ, we're the Holy, uh, we're not, we're not the Holy Spirit, we're to be like Christ, we, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Um, I get this question a lot, when you're in a relationship, just like when you're in a relationship with Jesus, you, you want to change when you're in a regular, when you're in any kind of relationship and you love somebody, you start to develop things where you're saying, you know what, I'm going to change for that person because I love that person, you know? And, and that's when we have the body of Christ with good sound doctrine and the Bible, the word of God that sets people free, that's sharper than a double-edged sword that would, they did it cause you to want to be like Jesus and want to be and walk out the word of God. So it comes to a point where they, you tell yourself, Oh my goodness, you know, this is not how the word of God wants me to live. I need to re I need to do something in my life. I need to change this up. But I don't, like I said earlier, I don't think that we should be the ones to tell people how they should, you know, uh, or when they should come out of their process or how they should journey. We should just journey with them by not compromising the word, being loyal to the word of God, but at the same time, you know, relationship and love. Wow, that's that's awesome. I, I really appreciate you, brother, for coming on, taking the time and spending this time. I'm looking forward to doing great things with you in this region um, because we have a lot of people that are in the closet that are afraid to come out. Just like you said, we have leaders that are struggling and they need a safe place to um, express themselves and be loved and healed you know, in, in, in these areas. Cause I know, you remember Donnie McClurkin, right? Donnie McClurkin yeah, yeah. Uh, tells his story quite often. So yeah. can you do me a favor and just pray for us and yeah. uh, pray for the parents and then pray for the body as a whole. And then uh, if you would like to say anything else, please do. And, and we're going to listen. Oh, before I pray, I just want to say that we got to remember that our love is not the same definition as God's love. Yes. You know, God's love is a man laying down his life for us. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we can just grasp that in the um, in the Hebrew, the word actually means to give, to mm -hmm. give someone's life, you know? So we throw that word out a lot also in the wrong context. And I feel that if we can just understand that a man died for us on the cross, that's what true meaning of love is. It's not sex. It's not a relationship with someone else. It's truly a man giving himself for us to die for us on the cross so that we could live through righteousness through his blood. You know, the power never loses its blood. It has never and it will never lose its blood, its power. And I feel that once we understand that it's not a gay to straight thing, it's a loss to save things. You know, oh, wow. you can just grasp and understand that it was at the cross that he wants your love, that he wants to kiss your forehead at night, that he wants that intimacy, that relationship with you, then we'll see change. But it starts with us, the body of Christ. So, I have Father, a question before you pray, I have a question. Somebody sent me a question. I'm sorry. No, you're good. So, um, Kevin says, loving the person of Jesus will bring about the change. How do you get them to the point of receiving deliverance? 
Well, that, that's what we do too, exactly. Uh, I believe that there should be a healing team at the church as well. There should be a healing team that would take these people that have come to the body of Christ. And I'm, not, I'm talking about like everybody, liars, stealers, any kind of sin that want Jesus, that want to change. There should be a healing ministry in the church. So that's another thing that we bring up in our ministry. That's very powerful. Uh, that was a good question, Kevin. I just really appreciate you, brother. Go ahead and pray. And because if they shoot some questions, I'll wait till you get through. But go ahead and um, pray for, you know, the things yeah. we whatever the Lord, I'm not going to limit you, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Amen. So, Father, I just want to thank you right now for this time of community. Yes, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, because your love silences all fear. Yes, I want to thank you, Lord, because the body of Christ is standing up and we are grabbing a hold of truth. We are walking out our purpose. Father, I thank you because there's revival in the LGBT community. I thank you because you're raising men and women that are bold and that are not going to compromise the word, but are doing it in love like Jesus did. Holy Spirit, show us your way. I thank you, Lord, for the pastors and the leaders and, and the people that have tuned in to hear this message. Father, I ask that you would touch that person out there that it's felt that feels broken and that they, they feel lost and they feel that, that what we've been talking about they, they've been missing out and that that, that 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 the way they think about church is not the way that that we think about God and that we have a relationship with God father I ask that you would start hovering around these hearts bring these people to Jesus I just thank you, Lord, because there's people that they want to hear about this. They're hungry for the word. They're hungry for revival. And this is what revival looks like. Father, I thank you for the blood that has never lost its power. And yes, Father, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus. And I silence every confusion because confusion does not come of you, Lord. It comes from the enemy. So we silence all confusion right now. I thank you, Lord, for the people that are still asking questions. Father, yeah. Use us, Father. Use us in a mighty big way, Lord. We love you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Brother, I really appreciate you coming on. And um, um, and I'm just going to pray. Father, we just thank you for Luis. Lord, we thank you that his voice will be heard throughout this nation. Father, we thank you, the Lord, that you will begin to even raise him up to bring healing to this to those people that are in those communities, Lord, and not we're not just going to limit them to, to that communities, Lord, but to those who are in need of love, those who have been rejected, those who have been abused, sexually abused, Father, that he can bring wisdom to uh, and, and love to those people who are hurting. Father, I thank you for building a team around him, Lord. I thank you for strengthening him. And Lord, even the times where he feels like he's slipping and he's failing, Lord, I thank you that someone will be praying the hold him up, Father, when he needs prayer. And Lord, the judgment will not be his portion, Father, that he will have somebody say, hey, I need somebody. I need you to pray for me right now because I don't feel as strong today, Lord, that you will send them, Lord, to hold him up in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for him taking a stand of righteousness and not compromising your word. Father, give him, continue to give him wisdom and strategies and understandings on how to minister to those that we reject, the body reject, to minister to those that we don't understand, to minister to those that take the time to minister love like never before. And Lord, we just bless this man of God, Lord, and all that he's been through, Lord. And I, Lord, we thank you that you're raising him up for such a time as this, Lord, to bring those um, that you have called into the fold in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just bless him and we thank you for him and for his life and his walk and his and the things that he's been through in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we even thank you for the books that he will write that will bring healing and deliverance to many of your people, even children, parents that are dealing with children you know, struggling with this issue, that he will bring wisdom on how to counsel them and give them understanding of what they're going through in Jesus' name. Amen. So I got one more question. Kevin says, what are some strategies you use that do not compromise the word um, and that brings the LGBT community to receiving the love of Jesus and inner healing? 
Okay, one uh, that I use is uh, we can affirm what the Bible does not affirm, and we can't call love what the Bible does not call love. Mm. One of the biggest strategies that we forget to use is that we have to understand what Christ did for us on the cross. It's the plan of salvation. You know, if we can just disciple people, discipleship is very important. If we can just disciple people, um, that's one of the strategies that we use, you know, is that we, first of all, we, we just can't, you know, if you can name one same sex attracted person or one couple that was same sex attracted in the Bible that God blessed, but people can't. There's 66 books, not one. In fact, he speaks against it. It's three in the Old Testament and three in the New Testament. You know, um, we have to have more gay awareness. We have to have more awareness to understand them and also understand what the word of God says. Um, and like I said, not compromising the word of God and understanding that we were all once there at before the cross. Mm, that's good. That's good. All right, guys. So um, anybody have any questions before we get off of here? I'm trying to get you on Periscope. And um, I just really appreciate you taking the time. Look, I kept you under an hour and some change, maybe a little bit. And uh, we're going to be reaching out to you. And I pray that we will connect with you more. We need to have these conversations. We must have these conversations because we will be responsible. The Lord will say, how in the world can you minister to everyone except this community? I love them also. Amen. So, um, And I thank you really, uh, brother. So God bless you, Louis. And uh, we will be hollering back. You know, I'm going to be checking out your page. Um, I share some things from shared some things from your page. And I really appreciate what you're doing for this, for the body of Christ and being bold enough. Many have said thank you for being bold and transparent to stand up and share your story, your testimony and um, and to stand up for the truth of the word and not compromise it. Amen. Let's Amen. do it. Let's do this. All right, bro. God bless you. God bless you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye bye. Good night, Periscope. Thank you all.